Now, something, this probably was the coronavirus, but you, you promised to write me an article <laughs> some weeks ago. It's coming. I've got half of it here. So we're going to talk about that half of it. The good half. Right. It hasn't been written yet. Right. Okay. Uh, and just, just for everyone at home, th this article is really to talk about um, being able to pick winners and losers in the space because you know in, in in all commodities there are companies which are going to make it and other companies which perhaps will, will struggle a bit and we don't want to waste anyone's time you know talking about companies which perhaps are going to struggle for whatever reason so we're going to talk about some of those headlines for nickel yeah for nickel okay they kind of apply to all commodities in a way some of them well but... nickel, nickel is unique though and really interesting and i'll tell you yeah. why because nickel unlike gold you, you could get a gold ceo in here who would potentially have a project that would mm. need under $100 million of CapEx for production. Like You're that right. that's right. possible. Right. You know, nickel is very, very capital intensive. In fact, I would argue that nickel is possibly the biggest destroyer of value over 20 years with the HPAL projects. Right. Projects like Goro ended up costing $8 billion, right. meant to be a couple, and Badavi, you know, five, Ravens, or Okay, five. here's one, I got one. So we've had a bit of a debate online, okay? Because okay. we, we got a quote from obviously someone you know, Mark, Mark Selby, saying you can't build a HPAL project for under a billion. Bucks, we've got a aimlessed company management team CEO saying, that's not true. We've got some new Chinese technology coming through and HPAL will be able to be delivered for much less than that. Are you a buyer of that? Um, what is this new technology? Yeah, so so here, here's what I would say. I think you're talking about two separate things. If you're talking okay. about a brand new standalone project, mm -hmm. I'm unaware of a single instance where someone's done that for $100 billion. Today. I, when, when they're not relying on infrastructure, when when it's a new project sitting in the middle of the jungle, wherever it is, like, mm -hmm. I think that's not happening anytime soon. Right. However, if you're talking about specifically about some of the stuff the Chinese are doing with HPAL in Indonesia, that's totally different because what they're doing is they're tacking on a billion dollars onto seven billion dollars of infrastructure. So, right. so that's that. So this, this is a kind okay, of okay. So there's an infrastructure marriages. component with the, the plant process exactly. Plant so, so like, so all, can all, you build a plant on top of a, a resource for a billion bucks? Okay, can you build a plant on top of an existing producing mine in Indonesia where the yeah. Chinese have already spent seven billion dollars? You're yes. going to say yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. So, so can you go from seven billion to eight billion? Yes. Greenfield site. I, I would be. Hard pressed to think of a single example in the world where you could do that. Okay. I just don't. And, and by the way, this is important about investing. So, you know, I think when you're looking at nickel names, I think you have to ask yourself, like, what is really fundamentally the process? Like, not like, are we sugarcoating it? Mm. Is it HPAL? And if it's HPAL, the answer is this is an HPAL project. Mm. I think you have to think it's going to be in the billions of dollars. Right. Right. And so, you know, if you're thinking about a speculative play, is this a big ore body? Will it go up when nickel moves? The answer might be yes. But if you're thinking, will this be a mine? I think the answer is going to be most likely so not. How would a company get a feasibility study done by an independent contractor to tell you it's going to cost less than that for a HBAR project? Well, I, I can't speak to any specific situation, but I think just generally, like, look at Namaska, okay? Yeah. Um, you know, they're in receivership now. Yeah. And they had, I think, no less than four of the top, you know, contracting firms working on that project, mm -hmm. or consultants, I should say, contracting firms. Mm -hmm. You know, they missed it by what half a billion dollars. That's so, so I think it happens. I think is yeah. the answer. It happens, and you know, I can't speak to why one person will miss it or another person will miss it. But HPAL, one of the things to remember about HPAL is, you know, the tailings. Yeah. Um, really should be in an environment, especially like if, if it's tailings sitting behind a tailings dam, need to be in an environment where you evaporate more water mm -hmm. than rains in a year. And so if you're in, if you're in a place or a situation where you like have torrential downpours and you're not going to evaporate, like you just have a real problem with tailings. Right. And in a world, in a post-valley world, uh, I think globally regulators are thinking about tailings. So, so to step back from all that and talk about just investing in nickel, yeah. I think you need to think about is this a sulfide or is this a laterite? Right. Uh, because at least you know, like in Dumont is an example in Canada, mm -hmm. uh, you know, potentially in Turnigan someday. You know, th those projects, um, the processing is very simple and straightforward. Like yeah. everyone knows how to do that. You can come up with a number that's real. It might be one point five billion dollars for Dumont. I don't, I don't know what that number is going to be, but that's the number. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go into some of the Australian um, HPAL processes uh, or, or elsewhere in the world, frankly, you know you don't know how long it's a piece of string. And so 
Now, you, that doesn't mean you shouldn't necessarily own those names because, mm-hmm. you know, when the nickel tape happens, any big resource will go up because it's just the case that that, that will be true. Mm-hmm. And so you can own a basket, but specifically you need to trade those names because yeah. if you look through the cycle, it's yeah. hard to see after Embatavi, after Ravensor, after Goro, it's hard to see that anyone is going to build a Greenfield HPAL project. Right. Different than Brownfield expansion, yeah. tagging onto an existing project, but a Greenfield project is like pretty unlikely in my opinion.